Hello students. Today we will be discussing about rotation motion. Okay. So let's see what do we have in rotation motion. So when we talk about rotation motion, what is the thing that we have? Rotation motion basically means when the body rotates about a fixed point. Okay. So what we have here is that if you take any arbitrary shaped object, let's say like this, and let's assume that this is a three-dimensional object, and it's rotating about an axis that is passing perpendicular to this. So the object may be like this, and you have the axis passing like this. So the object is basically rotating in its plane. So this is what is meant by the rotation motion. Now to simplify this, let's try to understand first as to how exactly the object is rotating. What I trying to say is this, to make this object move, you need to apply an external force. This external force is actually tangent, it's not perpendicular here, it's basically tangent to this object. Right? This is a three dimensional plane. I'm not able to show it. So it's acting tangentially and because of that the object will be rotating in, in its plane. Right? So let's see what all are the forces that are acting on this object so that it moves in, a, in its plane basically. So when we talk about that, let's take a very simplistic figure. Let's assume that it is a plane. It's not looking like one. Let's assume that it is, and there is an axis that is passing through its center. So what we'll try to do, we'll say that I am applying a force in a tangential way. Let's say at this point. At this point, if I name this as A, after some interval, this point is going to move here. So let's say this is my point B. Okay. Then, if I have to show that this and this are making an angle theta, okay. So if these are making an angle theta, so if I try to put a vertical representation of this, so this is in the plane. So if I try to put a vertical representation, so this is the same thing. Axis is passing through this particular point. You have a point A here. The force is acting like this. You have a point B here. The force is acting like this. Okay. So what can we get? I can say something like this. And as a result, what will I have? I'll say that theta is this angle. Right? And theta is this angle. Let's say L is the uh, angular path that is being covered and theta is this and the radius of this path is equal to r let's say okay so taking these things into account so i'm basically talking about this itself and removing this so that is clear so what can we get as a result i'll simply say the theta can be written as l divided by r okay if I say that the body is moving with a constant rate, that is, its speed is constant. Its velocity is changing at every instant of time because of its gravity. Its speed is constant. So if I say theta is equal to L by R, so with respect to the constant speed, there is a V. In a time interval delta T, so V delta T, defined by R. So this can also be represented with the theta. Let's assume that this is my equation now. Okay. Now let me make a construction here. As you can see, this is the direction of the force, the direction of motion. So if I just parallel transport the velocity vector from the point A to the point B, I'll say that I have the velocity vector here. The magnitude is the same, it's just the direction changing. Therefore, this angle will be theta and hence delta B, that is the change in velocity, is going to be like this. right? So taking that factor into account, what I can say from the new triangle that we have, that theta can be given by change in velocity delta v 
divided by the original velocity v. Okay, so let's say this is our equation two. Now from equation one and equation two, what will we get? We'll get v delta t divided by r, and that is going to be given by delta v divided by v. Or if I just interchange this, I'll get delta v divided by v. So that will come out to be equal to v square by r. So what does basically, sorry, delta v by delta t, my fault. Delta v by delta t is equal to v square by r. But what is this delta v by delta t? Delta v is basically the change in velocity divided by the time taken. So this tells me about the acceleration. Now this acceleration is what is known as a centripetal acceleration. It's going to be directed towards the center. Because as you can see, this force was because of the change in velocity. And here, since we are relating it to theta and r, so this is the velocity that will be directed towards the center of this. So this is the centripetal acceleration with which the body also going to be moving towards the center. Let me explain you now further why does it happen. If you only have a force acting around the tangential direction, in that case, the body should be moving only in a straight forward way. And similarly, if you have a force only directed towards the center, in that case, the body is going to move is going to fall towards the center. But since it, is, it does neither fall towards the center nor, nor moves in a straight line, so that means there should be a resultant motion. The resultant motion you find it out by the, by the combination of two perpendicular forces. The two perpendicular forces are going to be given by the centripetal force here. So this is the centripetal acceleration multiplied that with the mass. And there is going to be a tangential force m into delta v by delta t. So that will give you about a tangential force. As a result of that, gives you this circular motion. Is that clear? Hopefully, this makes sense. Right? Okay. Now let's take this further. So we have understood about the centripetal force. We have understood about the, the angular motion, basically, the basic part of it. So now, if we take it further. If we take it further, so what will we have? We know that uh, theta, we just wrote down, that is equal to L by R. So just not to get confused, L is the linear displacement. So if I just write it down, or we are used to writing it as S, so it's replace L by S. So I'll get S as equal to R to theta. Okay? Further, R is just the radius, so assuming that the body will continue to move in the same path, so we can find out what is going to be the velocity. So how do we find it? We'll just differentiate both sides by the d delta t. So d theta by dt, on the right hand side, we'll be having 1 by r into ds by dt. Okay? But what is d, d theta by dt? d theta by dt is what is known as the angular velocity because this is related to the angle. This load is known as the angular displacement. This is the linear displacement. So from here, we will define the angular velocity as omega. So omega is going to be written as 1 over r into the velocity v. Or we can say the velocity is equals to r into omega. Okay? If you take that expression itself now, that is v equals to r into omega and differentiate both sides now that is v by dt here and here as well that is d by dt here so what will I get? r is just a constant so that can be taken off so it becomes r to d omega by dt now d omega d by dt this is the change in the angular velocity so the change in the angular velocity is defined as angular acceleration so this will be written as r alpha. So alpha is the angular acceleration. On this side, you get the acceleration, linear acceleration. So A becomes equals to r alpha. Okay? So these are three expressions that we have. Fine? Now, we are going to use these three expressions in our regular linear displacement equations. Linear equations of motion to find out the angular equations of motion. So let's see what we get.
So we know that our equations, linear equations of motion, first equation was v equals to u plus at. Second equation was s equals to ub plus half ad square. Third equation was v square equals to u square plus 2as. Right? So now let's substitute for u, v, s and a. Let's see what we get. We can say that the initial velocity v is the initial velocity u is let's say r of theta naught and final velocity v is let's say just r of theta. So if I substitute, I get r omega. For initial velocity u, I can simply say r omega naught. For the acceleration a, I can simply say r alpha into the time dignity. Right? So if I get rid of the factors of r, I get omega equals to omega naught plus alpha t. So this is the first equation. Going to the second one, s, we know that is equal to r theta. So you can say r theta. Here, I can write this as r omega of t plus half r alpha to t square. The factor of r goes off. And as a result, I get theta as equal to omega of t plus half alpha t square. And then third equation, third equation goes as v square. So this can be given by r omega whole square. And then we have this can be given by r omega naught whole square plus acceleration can be given by r alpha displacement as r theta. So in a way, the factor of r square can be cancelled out and we get omega square equals to omega naught square plus twice alpha theta. So this is our third equation. The first and this is the second equation. So these are the three equations of motion that we get. These are angular equations of motion. Fine. So we end it here for the day. We start off with a new thing that is what is known as the moment of inertia. We'll introduce that concept in our next session.